All right, folks, looks like we're live. David here from Learn Stage Lighting. Let me mute my test computer here so that we don't hear me. Uh, if you are here for the replay, you're watching this later, it'll start in just a minute. If you're here for it live, it will start in just a minute. The point of the message is we will start in just a minute. All right, everybody, looks like uh, some people are starting to get here. It's about go time, and, you know, I'm one who's always jumping at the gun anyways. Plus, the the first couple slides are, uh, you know, nothing earth-shattering, just good old normal stuff. So, hey, let me know real quick, guys. Um, can you guys see me? Did the screen just change for you? We should see a slide up that says uh, how to set up a console for live playback and has a couple notes on it from people. And uh, just let me know in the chat, hey, can you uh, see us? Can you see me? And... Uh, do you hear me as well? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, Oliver. Um, I see you there. We are going to talk about in just a minute what we're going to cover. That's like the almost the first slide here. Um, so do keep that in mind, okay? Um, I'll go over that pretty quickly here once we get some confirmation that everything works, that humans are here. It looks like we got about four people here. You know, these live streams are new. They're a test for me. Um, but basically, cool. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, hey, Thomas. Great, great that you're in here. Cool deal. Uh, Thomas just became a labs member. Glad to have you in there. Um, and so, yeah, guys, awesome. Well, we got a couple people here and it's time. So I say, hey, everybody who comes late, that's their own problem. Uh -huh. But no, seriously. Um, but um, what we want to talk about today in this live stream is how to set up a console for live. Uh, you shouldn't see me. You should just see a slide right now how to set up a console for live playback. So everybody, just let me know. You see the slide. I'm sure you do. Um, and uh, Lars Waves, awesome. So, um, you know, I kind of announced this one because recently I got a comment from Luis here down below, Luis Valdez, um, when I did an Onyx stream the other week. And Luis said, hey, the whole concept of a punt page and how to run things live when You've never really, you know, say you get in front of a band and you've never heard of the band before. You don't really know what they're going to play. You don't know any of their music. And um, how do you run lights to that? And, and the answer is called what we call a punt page a lot of the time. And so that's what we want to talk about today. And I got a message too from Tommy earlier this week that said, um, hey, um, I just got my live lighting set up synced with my backing tracks running Show Buddy Active uh, from Logic. I'm looking forward to seeing any tips and tricks I may be able to pick up from your stream. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, guys. And let's see how many people are here. I'm just curious. Awesome. We, it looks like we got about seven people here so far. Maybe more will show up. But um, regardless of what console you use, just quick here, uh, something I want to try new for this live stream is I want to give out a free trial to learn stage lighting labs. You guys may hear me uh, talk about the labs quite a bit. And, you know, it's one of those things where it, it can be easier sometimes, I, I know for some people, um, to, you know, see it in person, check it out, and decide if it makes sense for them. And so I'm going to paste a link here to the uh, the Labs sales page here, if I can remember how to copy and paste on this Mac on my side here. And, uh, and if you just use the coupon code LIVE, you'll be able to get a free two-week trial. When you, when you hit the checkout page, you'll see a spot that says, hey, um, I have a coupon. You enter that in. It'll give you a two-week trial. You can check it out. And um, the cool thing about Learn Stage Lighting Labs, and one thing I really want to point out as we get started here, is that you can cancel yourself any time within the labs, okay? I recently actually joined um, a very high-profile membership site, something very similar to Learn Stage Lighting Labs in the music industry. And I was really surprised, and this is more commonplace than not, that I couldn't self-cancel my account when because it it's not it's not something I'm interested in. I just wanted to see how they ran their business, right? Um, and 
you weren't able to cancel your own account. You had to write to support. And I don't think that's fair. So at Lane Stage Lighting Labs, that's never going to be the case. Um, and so check it out. Thomas is new there. Thank you for the great testimonial, Thomas. And, um, you know, guys, you can try it for free, but only during this live stream. Once this live stream's over, I'm cutting that coupon off. It won't be, there won't be that free trial there anymore. So be sure to check that out. But let us talk about, um, and use that coupon code live. Let us talk about though, how to set up a console for live playback. Okay. So there's really three steps and Oliver, I think it asked Oliver guy there had asked at the start of the stream, you do need payment info to activate the trial. Unfortunately, um, that's, it's well, it's what the software the site runs on requires because if you don't ask for payment info, you won't get people to enter it after the trial and then you won't have customers and then I wouldn't be able to be in business. Um, and so, but you can cancel yourself. Remember that. Um, all you got, and it'll email you before the payment even occurs. So it's it's the site will. So it's really, I, I, I really, and there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So anyways, it's not a bad deal to enter your payment info. If you get charged and you're like, oh, I didn't want to do that. I don't like your labs. Then just email me and I'll refund it. 30 day money back. So three steps to setting up a console to run things on the fly. The first thing you got to do is define your desk and my my secondary kind of line below this is, it's not written here, but is that you want to um, maximize your desk because when you're running things on the fly, the more buttons and faders and just any type of control that you have to use, the better, generally. You really can't have too much. If you've ever watched, those of you guys that are in the Onyx world, um, on the older software MPC, there's a guy on YouTube called Zyper, who's a, like a VJ in Germany. And he shows some of his setups for VJing, and he has controls of so many kinds. He just decks it out with the most physical controls he can get because it helps. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then we're going to talk about what to lay out on your faders versus number three, third step, what to lay out on your buttons. All right. So that's what we're going to go today, through today. If that sounds good. Give me a quick, um, that sounds good in the chat. So I make sure the stream is still good, even though YouTube says it is. And then we will keep on rolling with today. Oh, look, YouTube says it's now live on my channel. I know I'm here. Um, and so um, three steps back to my notes here to setting up lighting on the fly. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to define your desk. Okay. And so ultimately, what do you have to use as playbacks and what can you use? And I'm keeping this here, at least until we get to the questions, I'm keeping this console agnostic, as I like to say, because a lot of these tips that I'm sharing can be applied to so many different consoles. And then when we hit a part where I'll let you guys ask questions um, and I'll answer them, then um, we'll dive in. You can say what console you're using and I can help you see how this strategy applies to that console. But ultimately, you can run lighting live on any console. So what do you have that you can use on as a playback? Do you have access to a quote, you know, real console? Um, do you have access to MIDI controllers? Do you have access to touch OSC on a tablet? Do you have access to a screen? Okay. Um, there's lots of examples here. Actually, I want to cut to a few of my my favorites here. Um, this should be me, and hopefully the audio is in sync with the video because I was working on that the other day. So we've got things here like the M-Touch, which is an Onyx thing, soon to be called the NX-Touch, if not already. Great little fader wing for their consoles. Um, you know, we've got real consoles, of course, if you've got an MA or an Onyx console. We've got MIDI controllers. This guy's one of my favorites. I think everybody should own one of these because it is the upside down Korg Nano control. This is the right side up version. Hopefully you can see it well, it's not exposing great there. Um, but these things are great because you get eight faders and eight knobs that are also effectively faders um, and some buttons as well. Like there's three buttons with each fader. So you could do like a go stop um, back or a go back flash or whatever you wanted to do. So, you know, I'm a big fan of MIDI controllers like this or Like this guy, the Akai APC40. This is the original, but they've got the Mark II now. And these are great because, you know, you get a whole bunch of buttons, you get some faders, you get knobs. These are kind of the granddaddies. 
Um, but there's other ones out there too, right? Like this button bank is very familiar if you're familiar with like the uh, Novation launch pads. And, you know, I love MIDI controllers just simply because in many consoles, they allow you to get more playbacks than you could get from the manufacturer for a reasonable cost um, really cheaply. Because if you've looked out there, I mean, that, you know, a used APC-40 like I just showed you is like 100 bucks. You know, a new Korg is like 60 bucks in the U.S., you know. An M-Touch from Onyx is like 500 bucks, and it gives you output from the console, so uh, from the software. So that's the first thing you want to do. And when, you know, this is kind of like the pre-pre-game checklist, because if you're going to run things live, you want to look at your console and figure out what the best, uh, what the way is that you're going to be able to get the most playbacks. Then we want to go ahead, we want to lay out our faders, okay? Um, when I'm creating faders, this is just a quick checklist here, is that uh, most of my faders are going to be intensities or effects or speeds, okay? Now, my intensity faders, I want to be HTP or highest takes precedence generally, or at least if they're not HTP, they at least um, fade the level up and down when I bring the fader up and down. That's standard on most consoles, but again, I just want to note it here um, in case anybody wasn't aware of that. But more importantly, all faders need to go automatically when I bring them up, and they need to release automatically when I bring them down so that I don't have to think about pressing a go button on a fader unless, we'll get down to that in a second, unless I have one or two cues. If I have two cues, of course, then I'll press the go button for time to time. But otherwise, for most faders, I personally keep them to one cue because at the end of the day, when you're laying stuff out to punt live um, and there's a band playing whose music you don't know, it doesn't matter how complicated your programming is if you can't find the fader you're looking for, right? And so I, I am always like definitely a huge advocate of keep it simple, stupid, because um, you can get too complicated and then you're scrambling trying to find stuff and you're not making a great show. It's better to hit all the cues, hit things on time, hit the lights when, when things change on stage than it is to have the best show ever when you're punting especially. Um, and so this next note here to crossfade IFCB, that's a hog term there. I see Lars, there's a hog guy. Um, for any non-intensity items. So if you're putting something on a fader that's not intensity, if it's an effect, if it's a color, whatever it is, then you want to fade that in. Um, if it's a speed fader, you want to make sure that that cross fades so that as you bring the fader up, it comes to full. As you bring it down, it becomes less of whatever it is you've programmed on that fader. And the reason why this is important is that if you, in most consoles, just record a fader with a color or a speed or something like that on it, the default behavior is that moving the fader up and downs actually does nothing. It only changes the intensity, which if you didn't store it there, then that fader literally does nothing and you've just wasted a fader on something that could be a button to get the same function. Um, so if possible, as I wrote here, run speeds on faders, okay? And this is going to be a big deal. I'll, I'll show some examples in a minute here. But this is going to be a big deal when you're running a show live is having speed control. Because I don't know about you, but when I first started punting, I was taught by a good lighting designer, but the consoles we had were older at the time. They weren't what we have today. And I would have to program for all my effects and, and cues and everything. I would have to program multiple versions of the same thing to have them at different speeds. And I would have to access those different speeds on different pages. And it was a whole system. Um, and so, you know, what you want to do is instead of doing that, instead of programming, oh, this is one that fades in instantly. This is one that fades in at one second. This is an effect that's fast. This is an effect that's medium. This is an effect that's slow. You need to make sure that you run your speeds on faders because then you just make one effect, one, you know, color change, whatever, and you control that speed from a fader or sometimes from an encoder wheel, depending on your exact console. Um, and so that is what I have to say about faders. Real quick, uh, let's head to buttons here. I'm just going to glance at the chat and uh, look cool. We got 16 people in here. 
awesome. Great to have you guys all here. Um, yeah, Thomas, you can do that in Onyx. Um, and so, yeah, that stuff's good stuff there. Um, and so we've got about twice the amount of people we had in here when we got started. Um, and so one thing I want to do quick here, actually, before we get to buttons, is I've got Capture here. Ta-da! Boom, now you can see it. Um, and I've got Onyx, which you can't see. But, you know, it's just as simple as, you know, obviously for most of us, if we've been around lighting for a minute or two, um, having intensity control, you know, being able to go like this as I just went with this blue, with these purple lights here, and being able to have intensity control so we can put that at 100, at 50, at zero is kind of a no-brainer, right? If you're running lights for a band, it's like, okay, I get that I can do that and that's something that I'd want to do. But then as I move down the line here, um, you know, here I've got a chase, I think. Yeah, there is a chase here. Oh, I know what, I gotta recategorize that real quick. That's what happens when you train people. Sometimes you change things when you're showing something. And now, as I bring this fader up and down, I get some different chases here. So at the top, I get a chase that's very fast and very bright. At the bottom, I get a chase that's very slow and very dim. Now, ultimately, if you're running a show, you want to be able to separate uh, different, you want to be able to separate basically the size of the effect from the speed of the effect so that you can control them separately. That's the most ideal, but having any control via fader of those kinds of effects attributes is awesome. You know, the fact that I can go with this ballyhoo right here and I can have it be big and be quicker or I could slow it way, way, way down and have it be very, very subtle. Okay, so those are some examples of, of how that can work. And so um, back to the slides real quick because we've got a lot more people here now. Oop, changing my view. Um, and I will answer questions in a little bit. So just I'm not ignoring your questions here, I promise. Um, it's just that's where we're at. So um, real quick, if you are live on the stream here, guys, you guys can actually sign up for a free trial to learn stage lighting labs right here and right now, which if you're not familiar with it, it is my community where you can sign up, join us, and um, be able to get access not only to a wealth of tutorial videos, but also personalized interaction in the forums. As Thomas mentioned earlier, he just actually came in yesterday um, and... And um, he said that he's already gotten more val way more value than he's paid for. So thank you, Thomas, for that endorsement. I appreciate it. And here live on the stream today, I just want to give you a free two-week trial so that if, you, if you're here on this stream, you've probably heard me talk about it before, okay? Um, and, and I'm just going to type the coupon code here, live, no quotes or anything. Um, you've probably heard me talk about the labs before, and you might think, ooh, might be cool to see what's in there, to, to get to, you know, see what's in there, try it out, see if it's right for me. Well, here's your chance. Um, live here, only live here on this stream, um, you can get a free trial, free two-week trial to the labs using the coupon code live at checkout. You'll just write, say that I need a coupon, and you will enter that coupon code. And so when the stream's over today, I'm cutting that off, guys. So just a few minutes after we end. So I would love to get you, let you guys check that out, let you see it. Now, so be, please do check that out, guys. I would appreciate it. Um, because, you know, I can't just, I would love to just do this stuff for free all the time. But I have kids um, and a wife and a family, you know, and I got I to gotta pay for this, you know. So um, if you love what we're doing here, you know, just consider just checking it out. You don't have to stay on as a member. You can cancel yourself uh, if you don't like it. Or if you do like it, stick on. Um, and I would really appreciate that if you, if you, if you like it. So um, when we talk about recording buttons, this is our next step after we make faders. Um, oops, let me hide that there. Um, then uh, when we talk about recording buttons, getting myself back on track here, I always personally record all of my buttons, whether they're an on-screen button, a physical button, etc., with a one to two second fade time. Now, why is that? Because in most consoles, again, this is going to vary console to console to console, um, but in most consoles, a one to two second fade time allows you to then modify that fade 
to bring it to nothing if you need to do that, which you do a lot with live music, or to make it that fade time, you know, make it one second, make it two second, or you have the option in a lot of consoles to make that fade in of that cue be very long, such as, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or more. And if you program, when you're first programming your punt page, if you program it at a zero second fade time, you won't be able to, in most consoles, you won't be able to turn that into a one second because most of them are math based. Like in Onyx, you know, where I'm most familiar these days, it you're allowed to set your, your cue list rate at 100%. Then you can speed it up uh, to 200%, which would give you a half second if you were at a one second, or you can go slower. But if you had set that at zero seconds, you can't modify the rate at all because anything multiplied times zero, of course, is zero. It's basic math. So I would encourage you, even if you think most of the time when you're punting, you would use um, a zero second fade, program the cues with a fade time, and then use a speed master fader. And this is going to allow you to um, get control of that speed, to be able to bring it to zero, or to be able to speed it up much faster than you had it before, excuse me. And so I like to do with buttons as well when I'm recording buttons. Actually, I can drag Onyx over real quick and show you a page I have up here. You know, this is a real basic starter punt page. You might not be able to see it well with a bunch of buttons on it. And each one of these buttons, actually, if I go and bring up capture here, each one of these buttons here has two cues on it. And it's for a very distinct purpose. So that, let me set my fade speed to 0% or to very fast, rather. Um, so that if I press this green blue, I get green blue. But then if I press it again, mistakenly or on purpose, I'll show you why here, I get the opposite. The colors flip in the rig. And I do this with all my color combinations. I do this with all my position combinations, okay? I do this um, with pretty much anything that there's an opposite of, right? So for example, I've got gobos here. I, I don't do two cues on my gobos because I haven't found a way that makes sense in my brain for it to work, right? Um, because there's not an opposite of a gobo when you've got six or eight choices or more. But for anything that has that has abilities, like, you know, here we'll have a half open setup, and it just flip-flops between half rig and the other half of the rig, so that if I keep pressing that button, it keeps moving, it keeps bouncing to the music as I go. Um, in Onyx as well, I didn't do it here, but I like to when I'm programming a show. I like to program extra cues for things like effects shape for things like the offset amount, because one of the things that Onyx can do that a lot of other consoles can is when you bring in an effect, actually, let me just select a light here. When you bring in an effect here um, on some lights, it actually stores here the, here, I'll just do it with these moving head spots. When you bring in an effect, it stores things like, I'll bring Onyx over here, like the mode or the shape that the effect happens at or the timing, the offset of the effect, it stores all of those things as parameters. So then I can literally store an effect without timing or without speed or without a shape. And then I can store the shape to a button, which allows me in a live show to literally switch between, you know, if I'm running a show and I'm running, say, this sine wave, and I have another finger on the fader for the speed, I can go from a slow sine wave to the same effect, the same exact effect across my rig, but I can change the offset. Or I could change the, the shape of the effect. Um, the options are really limitless, and there's so much you can do. And, and when you get to stuff like that, you know, to modifying effects and the, the nuts and bolts of putting effects on faders, um, that's going to vary console to console. You know, it just is. Um, how that happens, what the console's capable of, and the best way to do it. But just know as a general guideline, um, on buttons, you can put anything. And I like to maximize the amount of buttons that I have because for most things, like colors, like moving light positions, stuff like that, 
I don't really feel the need to have fader based control, right? Because if you don't need to change the amount or like the percentage of how much of that specific parameter of the light you're, you're putting into the rig, you know, things like a color like blue, you want blue when you press for blue. You don't want, you know, blue at 50 at half saturation, right? So that doesn't need to be on a fader. My philosophy when I think about faders and buttons is exactly that. It's, you know, that I don't want, I don't need to put more stuff on um, on faders than I have to. I'd rather put more stuff on button. Not only are they closer together for my fingers to grab, you know, in a show environment, but most things, except for intensity and effects, I find in my world, um, just don't have a need for that fader race approach. Maybe you'll disagree, and that's great. The great thing about punting is what I'm introducing here and what I'm sharing with you is is really just a framework, okay, um, that can be applied and modified to your shows as you see fit. But you should always start somewhere, and, and this is one great place to start for running things live, okay? So let's see. Oh, look, we have a copy of the same slide. And again, oops, I got a little crazy there with copy and paste apparently at one point. That's what happens when you switch between Windows and Macs sometimes is you forget every key combination and then you go crazy. Um, but seriously though, <laughs> um, at this point, guys, I want to kind of open it up for questions. I know we've had a couple already and I'll take more here. Um, you know, I'd love to know what console are you using and how does this approach, if you use something similar already, lend itself or work in your console? Um, and while I wait for some questions to come in, I know there's a few already. I want to talk again about Learn Stage Lighting Labs because, guys, I want to give you a, two fr a free two-week trial. It's still there at the bottom of the chat, um, which is great. You can see it right there. Um, hopefully, you're not experiencing any buffering. It's suggesting that you might be, um, but it says we're still alive. We're still happy. And on my end, it says everything's good, but not on the YouTube, um, et cetera. And so, you know, there's there's things there. But anyways, you know, use the coupon code LIVE today to get a free trial, free two-week trial in Stage Lighting Labs. The great thing here with it is that um, unlike other membership sites where you pay monthly, quarterly, or yearly, you can cancel yourself. You don't have to email support. There's no weird loopholes. I think that's deceptive, honestly. Um, it's really shady. You know, like I was sharing earlier, I ran into one the other day. I'd signed up for their trial. I checked out their, their membership, how they structure things, you know, stuff that I pay attention to so I can deliver the best experience for you guys. And then I wanted to cancel and I had to write support to cancel. And they were nice about it. But still, to me, that feels deceptive. And I always want to make things easy for you, but I want to make things fair. And so inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, guys, you may have heard about this before, but you get access to all these different tutorials and you also get access uh, to the ability to chat with myself and other folks in the forums, which can be a great place to apply the knowledge, apply the videos that you're learning from and, um, and use them in your lighting and, and find ways to, to understand how to apply them to your specific circumstance. And so literally all you do is there's a little field guys, and I'm just going to double check the coupon code. Make sure it works. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Uh, just because I hadn't seen any of those come through yet. But, but um, you know, seriously consider it if you're here because ultimately, um, you know, this kind of thing doesn't happen unless I've got paying subscribers. But also, I mean, you get a lot with Learn Stage Lighting Labs. You really do. And so I, I just encourage you guys to check it out here. I was just going to show you quick. All you do is you'll get to this site here when you follow the link that I pasted. I'll answer questions in a minute, guys. Um, you choose yearly, quarterly, or monthly. Obviously, yearly is the best value per month, but um, monthly is monthly and quarterly is quarterly. Every three months, then you enter your info here where it says have a coupon. You'll have more fields because I'm logged in. You enter the co code live. Boom, right here at the top, it changes to two weeks for free. And then you enter your info or your PayPal and you're ready to roll. As I mentioned, cancel any time. So I'd really, you know, I'm, I'm putting this out here for you guys to try. So I guess that I would really um, love to have you guys in there. Yeah, you do have to fill out your, your card info. Um, I wouldn't get paying subscribers from free trials probably if I didn't require that. And I don't think I can even turn it off in the software. So now we've got a lot of questions coming in, which is great. 
So I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to start at the start. We will get there down to where you guys are when we get there. Um, so I'm starting at the start just to make sure I don't cover anything. Okay, I think we're down here at Elaine Rojas. Do you map, do you MIDI map your encoders to colors and faders and dimmers or how can you make it simple? Okay, so this is going to depend, Lionel, uh, Lionel, is that Lionel? I don't know how to pronounce that. I apologize. When Sometimes when names aren't like white American names, I struggle, um, which is terrible, um, but kind of is what it is, but I want to learn. Um, so correct me if I'm crazy. Um, so I will MIDI map encoders on, um, on lighting, on MIDI controllers to whatever the console will let me do. If the console I'm working with will let me do it for programming, for being able to program a color and being able to program things like pan tilt on them, then I'm going to map them to that all day. Um, if encoders on a particular console only allow me to map to playback things, then I program things like hazers on there. Um, truth be told, I don't use them much. I, I, I like to save my encoders for programming. That's just what I do. Now, if it's something like the Korg Nano Control, which I really like that has um, encoder wheels, but really they're faders because they don't spin endlessly. They're a zero to 100% control. Then I like to use those for intensity faders, things that I'm not going to touch a lot, but when I want to touch them, you know, in a live band situation, I'm not need, I'm either taking it to zero, taking it to full most of the time, or just dialing it back or dialing it up a little. Then that gives the, me the real faders for things like effects. Um, and I know there's more questions coming through. Dean Rice asks, what lighting control are you using? Well, Dean, I use, I teach and use about six different consoles right now. Um, in this video, I'm using Onyx just because it's the simplest and I have things pre-programmed in it for shows like this. Um, and that's what I use often when people hire me to do shows. But I use and teach Entex DMX's D-Pro, the Light Shark console, the Light Key Lighting software, and Onyx, and I think I covered them all there, but I might have missed one. Um, let me grab a quick sip of tea here so I don't go lose my voice. Awesome. Oliver uses ETC EOS software. Yeah, you know, Oliver, I don't cover ETC. I don't cover EOS, um, but it's it's a good platform. You know, you can't go wrong. It's definitely designed with the theater skew to it, but that's not to say um, I haven't seen people run a rock show with it. It can be done. Um, let's see. So Dean says, I use the Airstream bridge. Should I buy a real control? You know, Dean, it just depends on what you want to do. Like something like an Airstream bridge is simple. Okay. Which means two things, two really key things. It means that it's simple to learn and to get going and to use it. But it also means that it's, um, a little bit more simpler in what it can do. It's it's harder to get think control live on the fly a lot of the time or to do more complex programming or to program quickly. And so you have those two sides of the coin. Simpler to get started and learn, but often not as much complexity or ability to do certain things or have more complex features. So my thing is that I always tell people, especially when they already have a particular console and they're saying, hey, I don't know if I should you know upgrade to something else. Um, you know, when you're watching my videos and when you're watching other people's light shows and doing your own lighting and you're on that airstream, you just got to ask yourself, okay, am I often bumping up against walls inside this software or inside this console where I want to do something and it can't do it? And if that happens often, then I think you should upgrade to something else. But if it's fulfilling your needs for the kind of gigs that you're doing, then stick with the Airstream, man. You know, it's simple, it's easy, it's quick to use. It, there's no problem with it, right? Um, you know, it's it's a, it's a fine little thing. Um, you know, not my favorite because, again, it's hard to run things on the fly or, you know, lay out a lot of different cues. But at the end of the day, man, if it meets your needs, go with it. That's what I always say to people. Um, so next question, Oliver says... I have my palettes for color gobu beam, etc. on buttons so I can go between them and a magic sheet set up so I can see what my fixtures are and currently set even set at even if they're not on. Yeah, and that's a great approach, Oliver. Um you're in yeah, you're in EOS, right? Yep. Exactly. And so, you know, 
what you can then do is, um, in something like EOS, is, you know, what am I reading? Yeah, you know, those are, sorry, I'm getting distracted here because there's so many things in front of my screen. But seriously, though, um, you know, those are, um, you know, those are great things to do. If you can see what they're doing, that's a great option. Um, again, I'm not as familiar with EOS, and so it's a little bit harder to apply things to there. But Lars said he is using a hog for fairly proficient. General question. How do I feel about having effects as chases or as cues where you have to press go for every step? Um, you know, Lars, I, it's not my big, I, it's not, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, just because I want to press, if it's an effect, I want to press a button once and make it happen. Now, I mentioned earlier, you know, I often and constantly run a lot of my cue lists and my, on my buttons as two cue cue lists that flip. And so that is kind of like a chase. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of doing a lot of chases just because they take time to program. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to do something that's hard to do in the effects engine of your console and a chase works. But I'm, I try to be lazy with my programming in the sense that I want to make a great show, but I want to get there, you know, reasonably. And I don't want to make it super difficult to get to that that end, right? You know, I don't want to have to program all night long to make a show happen. I want to be able to get in there, program quickly, um, make a great show, etc. So that is the option on there, guys. And remember, I see some folks, uh, I think, trying to sign up for the free trials. Just remember, you have to enter that coupon code live. You'll get a free two-week trial to learn Stage Lighting Labs at the link that I put in before. And I'll put it there again. Then we'll get back to the questions. I don't want you to miss out on that that great opportunity, guys. Um, and so I'm, yeah, like I said, Lars, I'm not a big fan of running chases or things where I have to press go for every step. When I'm in a punting type environment, when I'm running lights live to a band whose stuff I don't know, because I can probably make, I can make a lot of good stuff with effects and I don't know, I just don't want to have to press the button that many times so that I'm free to follow the music to see what's going to happen next and, you know, get the big moves right and not worry so much about the little moves. Uh, cool. Cool, okay. I'm just reading through here. Awesome. DJ Loki says, is there a way to control program the global faders on an M-Touch or M-Play? There is on the M-Touch, DJ Loki. This is such great news that you wanted to know this um, because I can show you. So what you do is basically pop this over here. So you've got your, your console here, right? You know, you've got, uh, let me pull up OBS here so I can see what I'm showing you. So you've got that going there, right? And down here at the bottom, all you got to do, whether you've got anything selected or not, is go to rate right here. Okay, so this is where if you had something selected, intensity, position, color, blah, 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 would be beam framing. And on the side, we've got rate here under effects, um, effects timing and fanning, then grouping and then rate. When you click rate, what you then get is bump a bum on your M touch, which happens to be plugged in right now. You get fader based control, and you can't see it because it's behind my head. There it is. So you get that control of the global rate. So this first one literally is the global fade. Number two is the global effects speed. Three is the selected cue speed. Four is my favorite friend, the live time or the time of when you put things in the programmer. And so those can be on the M touch. It's just if you start doing live programming things like selecting lights and then using these over here, these encoders to give them values in the programmer. If you're using that live, then you'll have to flip back to rate to get to your rate faders again, which is why in Onyx, I am personally a big fan of pre-programming all my cues and then using those different faders um, to get that control. And actually, DJ Loki and, and anybody else who's on Onyx, I definitely would want you guys especially to check out the free trial to learn stage lighting labs that we're offering as part of this stream today. It ends once the stream's over. It's just during the stream. Use coupon code LIVE at the page that I copied to get that. Okay, you'll see it in the chat a bunch of times. Because I have a action plan inside the labs called Puntastical, okay? And what it is, 
is it's basically what I looked at for today's webinar and built today's webinar off of. It's a full course here that shows you how to run lights live for bands, corporate events, DJ gigs, any type of show with music, really. And we went over programming our palettes, sort of. Um, we focused on laying out our desk, but then there's how to run your lights live and never start a show file from scratch again, thanks to cloning. And these are all complete lessons with bunches of with a, a good number of videos in them. And um, I'll just show you. And notes below all the videos as to what to do, downloadable guides, all that jazz. Um, it's all within Learn Stage Lighting Labs, and you can check it out free today. So even if you just go in, grab the free trial, check out the course and quit. Like, I don't care because I know that there's enough people out there that'll check it out, say, this is for me, and then continue with it that, you know, it, it makes it a viable thing. I mean, I'm glad to have you guys in there. So grab that trial today and we'll keep answering questions. Um, so that's how you do the Global Rate Faders, DJ Loki. Um, Gaming Gibson says, I use the Light Shark LS1. Awesome. But before that, I used an MPD-232, which is from Akai, I believe. Um, so it's interesting to have a setup now with the console, lots of faders, and just a few buttons. That's correct. However, um, a lot of you guys might know that I do um, I do some part-time um, work with WorkPro doing support. I've worked with a lot of these manufacturers. Uh, the way that this always has worked historically is that um, the manufacturers approach me because I've already fallen in love with their console and used it long before they pay me. Um, and I, I always try to keep... You know, anything that a manufacturer pays me separate from this learning stage lighting because I want to be unbiased with what I recommend and always recommend the best thing. So with that said, with the Light Shark, you can use MIDI controllers with the Light Shark. And I would recommend uh, contacting them through their, their LS Cloud site to get a MIDI patch built for the MPD-232. Um, I'm okay with those MIDI, with making the MIDI patches. Yeah, I see what that is. Yeah, it's from Akai. It's got faders and buttons. And you could get a patch built for that, and then you could use that and have the faders all connected to the LS1 and uh, win for real there. Let's see. Awesome. Mr. Rojas there says, uh, oh, how did I say your name? Lone, li Lionel. Lionel. Yeah, it's Lionel. Like Lionel Richie, just spelled different. Um, if you're using DMXs, where can you MIDI map a lot of things? Okay, so here's what I do in DMXs. Let's pull it up, you know. Um, so in DMX is what I like to do. And let's see. Do we have a show in here? I reset this computer lately. Oh, yeah, we got a show. Um, so let's just load a show. Yeah, this one's got stuff on it. I like to go ahead, and if I can, of course, it's hard. Any buttons, I'll program to these presets which of course they don't have MIDI learn. They're on channels MIDI 15 and 16. So you might have to do some MIDI magic to get that to work um, with DMXs. But then as for faders, um, what I recommend to folks doing is that you go ahead and, um, and I like to program things onto faders and DMXs like, oops, let's go find some, like pan and tilt, you know, just really, literally right-clicking MIDI learn, move something on MIDI controller, which of course I don't have anything connected right now, um, and be able to connect those all together, um, be able to control pan and tilt either from the presets from my buttons, or if I need to override it, I'll grab it with a fader. Um, but yeah, that in DMX, this, you know, the MIDI control integration is not as good as it could be. Um, but it's a really basic console and it's really quick to learn. I lost where I was. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I like to use, you know, pan and tilt on encoders um, and faders for intensity and effects. But of course, in DMXs, you can't really do that. One approach you can do with like faders in DMXs is if you program all your cues, all your presets without intensity, um, then you could just put that on a fader a MIDI fader, put that intensity for all your lights on faders, and then they would always be controlled only by the faders. The downside to that being, of course, that um, if they're controlled only by the faders, they're not controlled by the presets anyways. There's different ways to do things, but, you know, ultimately, if you're running things live a lot to live music, 
you might want to consider moving up from something besides DMXs. It can do what it can do, but if you start to push it out of the box too much, um, you're just probably going to get frustrated, you know, because it's not really designed to do shows like this, though it can. All right. Next, um, we've got how do show files vary between different kinds of acts? Oliver Guy said, like DJs versus bands, what sort of things do you change? Awesome. And it's Stephen, great to have you in here. Stephen here grabbed the free trial today. Thank you. Um, as part of this awesome live stream. I guess it's awesome. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, th these are kind of a test, honestly, uh, between like... Um, this has been, you know, kind of a test just to see how these do, because then we release the recordings, people watch them, see how they do compared to my regular YouTube videos, see if people like them, you know, if they're worth my time. Um, so how do show files for me vary between different types of acts? Well, um, not a ton. So what I like to do is I kind of start with the same basic things. I'm usually in Onyx, okay? And, you know, I lay out my faders for positions, for colors, um, for color combinations, which is most of my page, for half colors, gobos, prisms, strobes. And with DJ setups, honestly, um, it's usually a slightly different rig, which makes it look different, but the file's often the same because I'll clone it in. Um, but everything's faster in DJs and or slower um, at times. You know, I feel like lighting DJs these days um, with the type of EDM music that we have is not all that different from lighting bands. Um, you know, you just, they just have a lot more dynamics than the average band. And part of that's probably because of the radio, you know, and the, all the top 40 songs on the radio generally don't have a lot of dynamics to them, which stinks. Some bands live have dynamics to them. Others don't. Um, it depends on the band and how much they care about that. Um, but DJs, you know, they're going to have dynamics and it's going to be a dynamic show. And so I start with the same basic show file. And then for DJ stuff, you know, I'll focus on programming in more ability to change effects subtly and to be able and make sure that I have my, my speed controls in really key places, really central to where I'm working and where my hands will be so that I can very quickly and easily speed things up, slow things down, turn certain lights on and off, because it's so much more of a dynamic show, which makes it so much more fun, um, but also makes it more difficult, right? But ultimately, I start with the same basic show file. I'll use the same basic show file for corporate shows too. But in corporate shows, I'll just delete a bunch of the stuff that's like, you know, looks like a rock show, unless... It's a corporate show that looks like a rock show because some do. You know, I do some um, for some brands here that are based out of Nashville that they want, well, they want a country show, basically like a country, you know, like a show, like a concert, like a modern country concert as their corporate show. And so we make the lighting look like that um, as best we can. And, uh, you know, with, with what they give. So it all, you know, it, to me, the show files actually don't vary that much. Um, with DJs, I like to have more fine grain control. But at the end of the day, they're, they're all pretty similar. Dean says, um, any recommendations on a console for an upgrade from the ADJ uh, Airstream bridge? Because I'm running a lot of walls, chases, different things on the fly. Awesome, Dean. So I'm guessing by what you've said here, you're a DJ, um, probably. You can slap me if I'm wrong. Um, but so you're a DJ and, um, you know, you just find like, you want to run all these effects on the fly, but it becomes a little bit cumbersome to do so from the stream bridge. Um, you know, you just want more on the fly control. I would take a good look at the light shark. It may not be quite complex enough for what you want to do. And also Onyx, you know, those are, and actually, actually light key too. the Mac program that I cover um, from time to time. You can see I've got lots of videos on it and some, I've got more coming out soon. I was just working on them early today. Um, if you're a Mac guy, Light Key as well. Um, all three of those are good options. The Light Shark and Light Key are both kind of intermediate level. So, um, how do I best say this? You know, it's they're quicker to get started with and to program with. But if you really want to get fine tuned with controlling the rate of everything, it gets kind of it gets harder to do. But if you like, 
you know, the light shark is really great. For example, if you like to go ahead and just have a few staple like chases that you like, and you want to vary the speed of, um, it's got 10 faders, but you can add more via MIDI. You can do up to 30 faders and then have pages, um, which I don't usually recommend. I like to keep things on a punt page to one page so that I never am struggling to find what I want. It's just labeled there. Um, and that's pretty popular among lighting designers to do that and audio guys too, actually, to try to keep things down to as few pages as possible because in that live situation, um, you know, you got to find what you need fast. Quick sip of tea here. And so the light shirt's good if you can be limited to those 10 faders. You know, it's, um, and the, the button grid that you can do on screen with the tablet. Um, watch the videos and check it out, but you might look at it and compare it to your Airstream and say, eh, that doesn't give me massive amounts of more control than I wanted. It does give you faders, um, which give you the ability to vary, you know, the percentage of the chase or the percentage of the intensity on a physical fader, which is great. Um, but light key's really good and really powerful with MIDI controllers. Um, I've got actually some bonus content you can opt in for on my light key page on my website and uh, coming out in some of the videos that will be coming out next month that I'm working on today. Um, light key's really powerful with MIDI controllers, actually, if you're a Mac person. And then Onyx is great because it's a complete pro-level console. It can do pretty much anything you want it to do, but it has a much bigger learning curve. And so that's kind of my deal there is like, if you want to take the time to learn it, you'll be happy with it. But it does take some time to learn it, especially if you're coming from a much more basic console, like the Airstream Bridge. Nothing against it. If it does the job, it does the job. But um, it's a big jump. Lars said, I want to follow Spot a Lionel Richie show. <laughs> and as soon as I get him in my sights, he'll say, hello, was it me you were looking for? I'll let myself out. <laughs> Man, I like jokes as much as anybody, Lars. Um DJ Loki said, one last question. Have you, or will you, set up an in-depth video on how to set up Onyx to trigger Rizalu, Madrix, Grand VJ from hardware to software needed? Um, you know, I've done in-depth videos with Entex Elm on how to do this, and that's inside the labs. You can get a free trial here um, today with the free coup with the coupon code LIVE, so I highly recommend checking that out here. Um, DJ Loki, it'll only be available during the stream. But... Um, if you do have questions about Madrix, I haven't worked with Madrix much, but I've worked with Resolume and I'm not afraid to make those videos if you're in the labs and you want them. Okay. That's kind of my policy with the labs is if I have a member in there who wants something like this and it's something that I know other people are going to want to know how to trigger these media servers, then I will make the videos um, and I'll make them for you so that you can have access to them inside the labs because I know that it's not just making it for you. It's making it for everybody. So it's totally worth my time. It's a popular topic. Um, I'm considering actually doing that, especially because Onyx has their pixel mapper coming out later this year. And I'd love to compare and contrast the two for people because while Onyx's pixel mapper is going to be able to do a lot, it's not going to be able to do everything that a dedicated media server uh, like Madrix, Resolume, or Grand VJ can do. Um, the good news on the hardware side is you usually don't need any hardware because you can just control everything via network DMX. So that's a big bonus there, guys. Awesome. So guys, hey, let me know, guys, if you have any more questions here. I'll stick around for a couple more minutes. Um, but it's been great chatting with you. I'm going to kind of clo start closing some things up here, like my all these 10 billion windows on my computer. Um, but it's really been great chatting with you. Again, guys, you know, I'm offering this free trial to Learn Stage Lighting Labs, but only during the live stream. So I don't want you to miss out on that if that's something you're interested in. Um, I'll leave it up for about 10, 20 minutes after the live stream, but use that coupon code LIVE, the link that we've pasted into the chat many times, but we're going to paste right now. Um, so that you get a free trial, because ultimately... You know, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about on today's little webinar, on today's training, um, it's it's a good start and it's a lot of information. But inside of the action plan, specifically Puntastical inside of the labs, it's a full course and it shows you how to do all this stuff and more. Shows you how to go more in depth, shows you exactly what I like to program. I've got cheat sheets in there and I've got info on how to do it on the various consoles. And most importantly, if you're in Onyx or a console that can clone, how to create a show that's friendly for cloning so you can walk in in just a few minutes 
clone that show and be up and running real fast. So Thomas is a Labs member. Um, he says thanks. And Thomas, check out Puntastical once you're in Onyx World, um, once you buy your stuff and get get in there, because um, that and in Advanced Onyx, I kind of extend Puntastical and show you some ways that I punt in it, and uh, you'll definitely like that. But thanks, guys, for hanging out today. Like I said, I'll let the stream run for another couple minutes if there's any more questions, but or else, you know, have a great day. Enjoy making great lighting, and uh, thank you guys for, for hanging out here today, for signing up for the free labs trial, checking out the labs, those of you who are labs members, and all that jazz, um, because ultimately that's what allows me to be able to do stuff like this is the fact that there are folks who pay, and then that allows me to do this almost full time, which is really exciting. And, and I've got some really exciting stuff coming down the pathway for you guys. So thank you for hanging out today, guys. I'll see you. Awesome, guys. So that looks like the end of the questions. Like I said, I'll leave the code up for a little while, 20, 30 minutes, but then it's coming down uh, just for the folks who showed up live today. Thank you guys for hanging out, and uh, I will see you around the web. Thanks.